Right. So uh, I was asked to talk about entrepreneurship and who is an entrepreneur. So let me talk a little bit about that. Obviously, you probably have some interest or ideas of uh, setting up um, a business or really see what is required to uh, do uh, something like that. So I'm hoping that I can give you some insight, some information about uh, how to really pursue uh, that, uh, that type of career. So what is an entrepreneur? Let's uh, start with that. Really, a uh, simple um, uh, description of this path is an ent entrepreneur is an owner or a manager of a business who makes money through risk and initiative. A person that is willing to take responsibility for the day-to-day -day operations of a venture or a business. So that's what an entrepreneur is. And you know, you can have a lot of different interests and backgrounds. What really uh, gives you the uh, kind of unofficial title of an entrepreneur is that you want to pursue the idea that you have, you want to take some responsibility, and you want to set something new or take over something that is already existing, but really take it to the next level. So that is what an entrepreneur is, and if you want to pursue that, you have to have a few different uh, uh, traits that would make you fit to really look into a career as that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk a little bit of some of the traits of an entrepreneur, what you really, uh, some of the personality that hopefully um, would be very success, successful in this path. Then uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and what the company that I have does. And I will show you a quick uh, and short uh, video of uh, the uh, productions and uh, daily activities at uh, my workplace. And then I will be also talking about um, some of the day-to-day -day activities that I have. What, what does an entrepreneur do? What, uh, uh, on, on daily basis and what you can expect if you uh, choose this path to do on a on, on regular basis. So let me talk now a little bit about some of the trades of an entrepreneur. I've picked up five or six different uh, trades that I thought are very important and hopefully you'll see if you can relate to these trades and see if this is something that you're interested in. I'll give you a few examples. Uh, so you can connect with it. So, so the first thing as an entrepreneur, if you want to follow that path, is you have to have a good idea and a vision of, of what you do. So let's say, and these do not have to be an earth-moving ideas. It could be something very simple. And really, when you're starting something, it could be a very small business idea that you may want to have. So you can have a popcorn stand somewhere. Really, an entrepreneur is somebody that sets up a lemonade table in the, uh, uh, some, some corner and makes uh, a few bucks uh, out of that. So an entrepreneur could be very young, as far as 10 or 12 years old. You, you guys already might have had some ideas that have done this. But the important thing is you have to have an idea, a vision, and try to make some money at it. So it could be, as I said, something very simple. And sometimes simple idea will turn into great ventures. I'll give you a couple of examples is you guys have all heard of Steve Jobs, especially since he passed away a few months ago. Uh, there's been a lots of discussions about it. There's been a, a biography that was very successful. There's been discussions in, on TVs and things that he did, the style of management that he's had. But you know what he really started was back in the 70s, um, him and his buddy that were going to college, uh, Steve Wozniak, uh, they're from, uh, you know, th they lived in California. And uh, they were just in their early 20s. So Steve Wozniak was really the brain behind developing the hardware. The first Apple computer that they developed, these two kids, uh, it was in their parents' garage. So Steve Wozniak made this little board and showed it to, uh, Steve uh, Jobs, and as soon as he saw that, you know what he said? He said, I bet I can take this board and sell it to others so they can put it on their desk and use it as a personal computer. That's, you know, as soon as he saw that, he had that vision that he can make money 
set up a company and take it from there. Now around the same time, you see these are two college kids that had this vision. At that time, compute, there was no personal computers. I know this is hard to believe for you guys, but really there were two kind of distinct uh, part of computer industry. There were uh, huge mainframe companies like I IBM, like digital, that made these humongous um, mainframes that were as big as this room. They were worth a few million dollars and only a few uh, sectors of industry used them. You know, military, banks, huge corporations, government use these mainframe computers. You know, the computing power of what they had is probably the same as what you have in your hands right now with your Blackberries and, uh, um, you know, whatever uh, other digital device that you use. However, they were very cumbersome and used for very um, boring and practical applications there. And at that time, I'll just give you another example, is the CEO of Digital, who was one of these mainframe companies, around the same time that Steve Jobs came with this uh, idea that he can sell these as individuals, uh, as personal computers, a few engineers went to the CEO of this huge company that were making these mainframe computers back in the 70s, and they said, you know, we've been working on this for a while. We have this great idea. We have a small box that we can make, and then we can sell it as individual boxes to people so they can use this, and we think we can make a lot of money, and we will call it personal computers. And this, and this fellow, you know, he was a head of a multi, probably billion dollar corporation. He looked at these engineers and said, why would anybody need a computer on their desk? This is a crazy idea. We're not going to do this. And of course, the history has proved who was right and who was wrong. You don't hear about digital computers anymore, or digital ink as a company. And of course, I'm sure you all hear about Apple computers. So you see, this is the difference between an individual that has a vision, uh, not lots of money, not lots of background, as far as technical background, but you see how they can transform the industry. So that's what you need as an entrepreneur. You have to have an idea that you think and maybe you are the only person that has this that you think that you, know, you can make a difference. Now, it could be a small difference. Not all of us are going to be Steve Jobs and Larry Edison that you know, changed, transformed the whole industry. But nevertheless, you can have an idea that you can make some money at it. And that will make you an entrepreneur. So always think about the vision and the idea that you have, because that is the start of this path that you have. So, the second point that I think is very important and brings me from the idea to the next point is having conviction, believing in, in what you have. Because a lots of time with these ideas, a lots of people will come and tell you, that's a stupid idea, that's a silly idea, you know, you better go, you know, don't waste your time on it. And sometimes, you know, this could be the case, but you have to believe in in, in really what, what you want to do. And lots of time listening to a lots of negative comments that you might get from your friends or family members or those who are around you might not be towards your advantage. Now, I'm not saying that all ideas are good and they're gonna end up with um, you know, great success. But what I'm telling you is even if you fail in your first or second or third, uh, idea that you have, those will give you uh, background and insights for future ventures that you have. So do not think that the first time you have an idea and you want to have a small business or you want to set something up, sell on the web or do whatever you want to do that, you know, your gut is telling you that you should do it, that it's going to be successful. You might fall down, you might lose money, you might be ridiculed, but the experience that you get through all of these hardships will definitely help you in your future ventures that you have. So always keep that in mind, that you have to have conviction. And the next thing is to really be persistent. I think persistence is perhaps one of the most important trades that one could have if you want to get into uh, this, this career path. I'm just going to give you a couple of uh, examples of how important persistence is. Um, let me read the biography of this individual. You might have already heard about this, uh, but I want to tell you how many times this individual 
has uh, uh, succeeded and how many times he has failed, and then what happened to him. So I'm not going to tell you who, who this person is. See if you can figure it out from the, from the date, and also you might have already seen this. So this fellow is an American, and uh, he was back in the 1800s. So in 1832, he lost his first job. In 1832, again, he was defeated in the US legislature. 1833, he failed another business. 1834, this was his first uh, positive performance, was he was elected to the US legislature. 1836, he had a nervous breakdown. 1838, he was defeated to be the Speaker of the House. 1843, he was defeated for nomination for Congress. 1846, he was elected to Congress because he tried again. 1849, he was rejected as a leader to be the leader of the party. 1854, he was defeated to be a senator. 1856, he was defeated again to be the Vice President of the United States. 1858, he was defeated again for Senate. And in 1860, he became the President of the United States. So anybody knows who this person is? Lincoln. Lincoln, you got it. So Abraham Lincoln was an individual that perhaps is known as the most important and the best president one of the best presidents of the United States, and look at his resume. If you just look at all of these, of all the failures that he has, what, what would you say he is? He's definitely not a winner. You would probably look at him as a loser. Look at how many times he has lost, and yet he has become one of the best presidents of the United States. So you're going to be losing some of the challenges that you take in life, but the important thing is, you have to try again. And if you look at all the successful people that are around you, you might see them as successful at that given point of time. But I can assure you, if you look at everything else that they've done, they have had a lots, of, a lots of challenges and lots of losses. Let me just read another uh, um, reference of somebody that I'm sure you all know, Michael Jordan. You know, uh, back in the 90s, he was known and still is known as the greatest basketball players of all time. Just, just listen to what Michael Jordan says here. He says, I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost almost 300 games. On 26 occasions, I have been entrusted to make the game-winning shot, and I missed. I have failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. So keep that in mind, guys. Failure by itself is going to hurt. But if you learn from it and move on, that is going to make you a winner. That is going to make you a person that has high accomplishments. And if you look at everybody, in, the, in their careers, they have all failed. I can assure you that they all have failed. I think one of the final points that I want to make is, as an entrepreneur, you have to take risks. If you don't take risks, you're not going to really do anything. A person that does not take risks in life is just going to be a person that is not going to do much in life. Now, when I'm talking about risk, I'm not talking about crazy risks, because everybody I'm sure at your age are reminding you uh, that you do not want to take uncalculated risk. I'm talking about calculated risk that you want to take in your careers. So if it looks hard, if it sounds hard, if you're going to lose other things, if you have to sacrifice other things, that's just part of the process. So you have to be a person that is willing to take risks in order to do something in your life. So as an entrepreneur, be willing to uh, be comfortable and, uh, of taking calculated risks if you want to, if you want to be successful in, uh, in what you're doing. So let me talk a little bit about my own path of, uh, um, of, of my career here, and then uh, I'll show you a quick video of, of, of what I do. Is. So I'm an electrical engineer by trade. So I always, when I was young, I was interested in 
setting up uh, electronic kits and little uh, um, you know, speaker systems or uh, different kind of amplifiers and things like that. And because I was, I really enjoyed it, I thought that you know, be, being an electrical engineer is something that uh, would, uh, would be interesting. And that's what I followed. Now, as an engineer, I'm sure there might be different sessions that if you do want to become an engineer, but one thing that you really have to like is, is your math. And uh, especially with electrical engineering, from all the other trends of engineering, there is a lot more math than any other uh, engineering trades that you want to pick up. So first, you have to see what is your interest. And also, you have to see if you enjoy the courses that, that uh, uh, is going to lead you to that career. So after I finished uh, university, I was a summer student. I was looking for a summer job on the uh, third year of university. And I uh, was hired as a summer student in the company that I own right now. And at that time, there were five or six of us. And I uh, had a great uh, project for three, four months. Uh, I got paid for it, which was even uh, better, because I enjoyed what I did. And, and then that led into getting a full-time job at where I work. And after a couple of years, there was an opportunity. So I took over uh, the company. This is almost 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, back in the early 90s. And since then, state industries, you know, from the five or six individuals that we had there now, there's about close to 60 individuals um, that work there. And uh, uh, what we manufacture is, uh, we manufacture, we have a couple different divisions. We manufacture polyurethane plastics, which is a special type of plastics, one that is used in military applications. We have a lots of defense contracts in industrial applications like automotive industry, agricultural industry. Um, and also, we have another division that uh, makes the equipment. And we sell it all over the world for, uh, for people to actually manufacture the plastic. One of the most common parts of polyurethane that probably you guys have all been in contact with are rollerblade wheels and skateboard wheels. That wheel that you see. Uh, that you use on the long boards and skateboards and also rollerblades, that is polyurethane. So let me show, show you a quick video here. And after that, I would like to talk quickly about some of the day-to-day -day challenges and what I do as, um, as the uh, uh, president of, of the company. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to go over that with you as well. Great, thanks. So really. Quickly, what, what I do uh, every day personally is uh, I have lots of meetings. So I have to, when, I, when I go to work, I have to meet with quite a different, different uh, part of the organizations there. So I have a quality meeting every day. I have a production meeting to see really uh, what's going on, trying to solve problems of uh, all the day-to-day -day challenges um, that we have here. Uh, we have a sales and marketing meeting because we have a sales group that are always in contact with customers. So I'll sit down with them and see uh, what's going on in, in that sense that we have. Also solving problems and talking to customers because you know, when you sell things to people, you always have to back it up. If it doesn't work, since they're paying you, they know where to find you. And if you don't answer them, if you don't try to be helpful to solve their problems, you're gonna, not going to have them as a customer. Um, also, I'll travel quite a bit, travel to have meetings with uh, potential customers. And also, if there are problems, again, sometimes they ask you, you have to come down here and um, you have to look after what they're looking for. Um, we do trade shows for the parts and equipment that we manufacture. We go all around the world for trade shows, so you can actually show to people what you have. I also hire people of you know, the uh, opening, openings that we have you know, within our organization. Networking with other uh, companies and other individuals, that's another part of what I have to do on, on a daily basis. I also have to look at the financial activities of the company, meet with an accountant, meet with a lawyer to see you know, how we're doing on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, and every year. Because at the end of the year, your success as an entrepreneur indicates how much money you make at the end of the year. Now, money is not the most important trend, but if you want to be a successful individual, the money is 
what's, what's indicating that how successful your organization is. And finally, legal activities is, you know, you gotta meet with, uh, with a lawyer uh, to make sure that everything that you do is, and what government wants from you is really followed. Otherwise, you could get into trouble as well. So this was very briefly a little bit of um, what I do personally on a uh, day-to-day basis. I can see that we have a few minutes left, so I'm going to stop and see if you have any questions in general about entrepreneurship or what I just showed you as my, uh, you know, the small company that, uh, uh, that, that I have or anything that is related to this. So we have a few minutes. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer it. 